What's up guys? Welcome back to another movie review, actually. We are going to be reviewing the movie Joker. We saw, me and Jake saw this together, and um, typically I do movie reviews on my own, but like I feel like Jake would want to say something about it too. We're just at his house right now, and we're just gonna just be talking about this. Half of this review is gonna be uh, non-spoiler, and then the other half is gonna be spoilers. This movie is starring Joaquin Phoenix, um, honestly sensational actor really did a good job with this directed by Todd Phillips and this movie is set in 1981 and this movie was not a superhero movie like people have that like uh, perception or like point of view that it's gonna that it's gonna be like a superhero movie with full like action-packed stuff but it's really not it's more of a dark psychological intense uh, thriller or something like that. Jake's dogs are barking. They are dead. Okay, so we got two dogs in here now. A little Rocky. Three if you count he, me. Uh, he ran away. Okay. Run! So ba back to our regularly scheduled program. So this movie starts out with Arthur Fleck and the opening the opening scene is just crazy. I mean like um the way Joaquin Phoenix like studied for this character and prepared for this role like, the amount of commitment is amazing, and I love it. Let's just start off with the laugh. The laugh is the most, like, noticeable part about Joker, and I love how they implemented it with, like, a condition that Arthur had. So, like, pretty much the first thing you hear is the laugh in this movie. And it's and it's crazy, because, like, um, he put it as part of his mental illness and some condition that he had where he couldn't control the laughter, that it would, like that he would run out of breath and it would like physically hurt him. It was crazy because like it didn't make, it made you like feel really bad for him and uncomfortable at the same time. This movie is like a downward spiral of just mixed emotions throughout the ride. Yeah, so Mr. Phoenix, the way he like portrayed the Joker's mental like state showed that he was literally just a regular person in like kind of someone else's mindset. But at the same time, he wasn't trying to hide it from anybody. He continuously like made sense of why he did what he did. But then again, it was like never right. But in his mind, it was the only way out of it. So I think the way they portrayed that in the film and the way that Mr. Phoenix had to, <laughs> like, he lost weight for this role, and like looking at him as the Joker and looking at him as, like, just a normal person, like you can see, obviously it's the same person, but it's like completely two different people. Yeah. So I think the way they did that was really effective. Yeah. And then one final thing I want to say that isn't spoiler related. It's not superhero based, but there is ties to like the universe, and I don't think that's really spoilers because obviously it has to be. Yeah. Um, even if it's like the Spider-Man films, they mentioned like Doctor Strange, like yeah. the old ones. So that like there there was ties to the actual universe, and the way everything came together at like the end, it really went full circle, and like you can just see how everything in his mind is going, like and like exactly how we planned it. That's why. There was a lot of things in this movie that you could actually like you can, it kept you wondering what was real and what wasn't. Yeah. So like, um, there was a scene where I just thought it was like a flashback, you know, like of what like was going on, but it, it didn't like actually turn out that way. But once like you actually like go back and think about the scenes, like they weren't like uncomfortable by Arthur and like how he was as a person because like he had more of a childlike mindset because he had no, he had no one else around like other than his mother, really. I don't know, like I was uncomfortable in that scene and I did and I was looking, and I was thinking about the audience that was that was in that particular scene. Yeah. And how they were, like, how they weren't affected by him. There was a moment where at least I was peeking through my hands because I knew it was gonna happen. I wasn't scared per se, because I wouldn't say this is a scary movie, but I was just like, it was, a, it was like thrilling to like watch. So I was like anticipating something and I'm yeah. like, if I knew it was coming that, even though I knew it was coming, it was still gonna like 
freak me out. The expectations and whether they were met or subverted, it always left you wondering what was coming next and if that thing was gonna happen or come back. That's more, yeah, that's most of the non-spoilers. So we're gonna get into spoilers like right now. Literally right now. Like right now. So if you haven't seen this movie or haven't gotten a chance to see it this weekend, uh, the second week that it's out, um, don't watch the rest of this video. Um, you you are gonna be, you have been warned. You've been warned. Um, yeah, spoiler warning in three, two, one. So yeah, we're gonna get into spoilers. Um, first and foremost, I wanna like talk about like how we were wondering in the theater how Arthur might have been Batman's half brother. Yeah, that, I don't, I'm not like super into like DC lore just cause like, I've been so in love with the Marvel movies and yeah. the DCs. I wouldn't say they were terrible, but they like let us down at least compared to Marvel. So like, and the Joker wasn't amazing in the DCU. And I still have to, I have to rewatch The Dark Knight and then I have to watch the other two because I only watched the other two in that series when I was really young. So I don't remember them. But speaking of like the DCU, like the Joker was like really different from what I thought it was. So this was a really refreshing take on it. I don't remember Heath Ledger, like as Joker, like I know he was amazing. I remember seeing scenes from him, but to my knowledge, not seeing Heath Ledger's Joker yet, he was the best in my opinion. Cause I feel like Jared Leto's was such a, I don't know, modern reinterpretation yeah. that it was too modern because he yeah. had like the face tats and everything. And I mean, yeah, it. this Joker is definitely the best, especially because of like the um, ties between like the family. Yeah. That's that's what it's all coming back to for me is like whether that was real or not. And I mean, we know it wasn't real by the end of the movie, mm -hmm. but like while you're watching, it's like, is this a different interpretation or is this real? Like, yeah. I don't know. That's I like the different take that they had on Thomas Wayne because like, um, I guess like from all the Batman movies, he's portrayed as like, well, yeah, he's Batman's dad. Obviously he looks at him as like the thing he loves most. So, um, but like looking at him from Arthur's point of view, someone who is like really poor, has no like privilege at all more than him. Um, and seeing how much of kind of a jerk he was towards him really like opened my eyes of like how he could be like one thing, but then it can actually be this other thing. I don't know. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean like, cause Obviously, Batman's dad is dead by the time he becomes Batman because he was killed as a kid. And we see that in the end of the movie, like yeah. that scene happening, um, which was, for me, at least a shock because I didn't think they were going to add that in there. But what was your point, like, you were trying to say? That he was, like, more of this, like, nicer guy. Right. So, like, in his yeah. head, he was, like, the savior or, like, mm -hmm. this, this movie is not really based off hero versus villain. It's really yeah. based off of... Um, mental, mental like illness or mental yeah. like deficiency. Yeah. And the way the world, or at least Gotham in this scenario, is treating him because he's not at least like the rest of us mentally. Yeah. But he still has the same feelings. Like he's not normal, mm -hmm. but at the same time he's the same as all of us. So that was really, I guess refreshing to see like a superhero take on that in today's like world yeah in my opinion like that that was really like eye-opening for especially young kids because mm -hmm. while it's rated r and it's crazy like obviously parents still will let their kids go see it because it's like superhero stuff yeah. related yeah but i mean it was a really nice take for what like who it's like portraying yeah. It's really accurate in my opinion. In ways you could relate to uh, the Joker and how like, um, and how he did things or why he did things. Like you could, you could get what he did, but like it's not always the right thing. Just like in the subway where he killed those three guys and like, um, he kind of like laughed about it because like there was like no other way out. And at least for him. At least yeah. for him. At that moment in that scene, I forgot he had the gun. Like, yeah. I literally forgot he had the gun. He yeah, was yeah. getting beat up and that yeah. he wasn't going to use it until, like, I heard the gunshot and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, like, he's actually killing them. Then when the other guy, like, escaped, like, almost escaped, I thought, like, he was going to get away or something like that. 
but then like he got him and then like he shot him like five more times like bro i was sitting there i was just like bro what like what yeah. like i was like come on like like i didn't want him to kill him like yeah but at the same yeah. time it's the only way i guess he really knew yeah how yeah if that makes sense because like he already killed the two like i think yeah because he already killed the two guys yeah so like um he didn't want to like get more in trouble like that's yeah. crazy how like he still got like got away with it okay bye dogs okay, but the, the dogs went running super fast okay super fast doggo show picture <laughs> but one thing that like you did mention that i did want to talk about is that like i felt bad for him like the yeah. majority of the film yeah like, me too because he was like this guy who wasn't like everybody else mm -hmm. and like no one really knew yeah because they just thought he was like a freak mm -hmm. and whether you're taking this from like an older point of view that like like back in those years mm -hmm. where like maybe people weren't as aware yeah or like now they still aren't but it's more of like a like a crazier thing if you yeah like it blows up really really fast if you are like if like if this happened now mm -hmm. that'd go crazy oh like, really? yeah like, for real world catastrophes mm -hmm. kind of stuff it, it yeah. at least leading up like that's that's how yeah. the world would perceive it yeah but like if you're just in his head like this movie is it's it's like his only way out and you like understand it. it's kind of like mm -hmm. how you sympathize with thanos yeah but, oh yeah like an infinity war yeah, yeah it's like how you sympathize with him but mm -hmm. at the same time he's killing off half the universe yeah at this point in joker like he's killing people yeah but, and he's crazy but you still feel terrible for him because he's not thinking right yeah and you yeah, can't exactly. help it and no one can because he's poor and yeah like no one understands yeah, because you're, you're, like, really not rooting for him in this, like, in this movie. No. Like, like yeah, you feel for him. You're kind of, like, drawn to him because of that, because you feel so bad for him. Right. Um, you, that's why you kind of care for him, but you're not rooting for what he does. Or, exactly. like, or his ideas. Exactly. And, um, his final transformation, like, as Joker. Yeah, that was cool. That, that was well executed, like. Like, you can tell because, like, those stairs at the beginning, he's walking up there, he's, like, moping. Like, yeah. he's, like, miserable. Like, he doesn't want to, like, it's kind of like he doesn't want to live anymore. Because, like, he does say that, like, a few times um, in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then, like, whenever he puts on the face paint and dyes his hair green, um, you can see him, like, dancing. And he's fully, like, confident in himself. So, like, apparently, like, his old self was, like, a mask to him. And then, like, he rips it off and then, like... Joker is actually the real him. Yeah, and when they're in the train scene and yeah. he puts on the mask and then yeah. throws it in the trash, I was yeah. like, that's symbolism. Like that yeah. yeah. Like I was like, that's him, like he's him now. And he walks out of that subway with mm -hmm. like the cigarette and stuff. Yeah. And he's like being all cool and stuff. Yeah. He realizes who he is now. Yeah. And I mean while that might not be the best decision, yeah. It's it was cool to see that transformation. Yeah, because that yeah, that's, that is kind of like symbolism where like he sees the cops as he's like dancing around, like dancing down the stairs. He's still Arthur in that sense. So like whenever he sees them, like, and he gets scared and he runs away and he blends in with the crowd, takes off that mask. Like he's like, okay, yeah, yeah like now yeah. I know who I am. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I like yeah. that. Like obviously if you're looking at it from a super villain point of view, all the stuff with like like his transformations and how he executed things as a villain mm -hmm. was like really dope. Yeah. Like as a villain point of view. Yeah. Like that's what a villain is. Yeah. That was sick. But yeah. at the same time, he's not a villain. He's just being himself. But if you looked at it from a villain point of view, he's doing everything like crazy. Cause you know, mm -hmm. if he was like in the movies and he killed someone, he'd start dancing. You didn't know yeah. like why, like is yeah. he insane or yeah. something? Yeah. But like when you watched him kill the three guys and he ran away into the bathroom and he started mm -hmm. dancing, it was like his, meditation or whatever yeah like that was his code yeah. i guess yeah. so I, w I saw that or when that happened i was like he's like if i was looking at this from like an insane person mm -hmm. like obviously he's not right in the head mm -hmm. but like if i was looking at this from an outsider's point of view at an insane person i'd be like what is he doing yeah. but if you're inside his mind or living his life with him he's just like calming himself down yeah or he's being peaceful and that's why he starts dancing because that's like his happy yeah i saw this one video and it said it's like kind of like um a dance that symbolizes like a caterpillar in a cocoon than like a, a butterfly yeah. or something like that because that. he was yeah. very like elegant with the way he yeah moved. yeah so it was like he was breaking free from himself yeah this movie is just so deep it like makes you like talk about like 
all this stuff. Yeah. And it makes you like it. I've actually haven't stopped thinking about this movie since we saw it a couple days ago. I'm going. We're going to see it tomorrow night as well. Again, my brother's gonna come because he wants to see it. We're just gonna. Yeah, we're just gonna think about like what we said and then like like see it again in the movie, and then maybe like add on to it more. It was just. It was just insane. Like it. I don't know like truly like how to feel like when it comes to this character now. Right. Like, yeah. I feel like while Thanos, going back to the Thanos thing, while mm -hmm. Thanos was more like the actual villain, this is just a dude. Yeah, like, this, this is just is, some dude, yeah. Like, and he's not, like you, and he got the name. Huh? And you saw him get his name from the, uh, Frank Murray or whatever. Murray Franklin, yeah, Murray Robert Frank De Niro's character. Yeah. So shit. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, and I didn't realize in the video when he called him like Joker or whatever, mm -hmm. like as he's an yeah. actual Joker, yeah. not like the card Joker. Yeah, but, like he's a joke, like he's yeah. a wasteman or whatever. Yeah. And then he said that, and I was like, oh, yeah, like because that's what you called me in the video or whatever. Yeah. And I was like thinking, like everything he said makes sense, mm -hmm. but the way he executed it, like as a person, wasn't like the right way to do it. But him as a, like mentally, mm -hmm. like it made sense. Which yeah. is what you want. Yeah, so now we're gonna talk about like his mom because like she was a very interesting character even though she wasn't like that much of a well she kinda was a big role in the movie, but like kind of like not as much. Yeah, she didn't have a big presence. Yeah, she didn't have a big presence. You didn't think that she was like a delusional person at that time with a mental illness as well. You just thought she was like um with a major like terminal disease that she was gonna die at some point. You know? Cause as much as like bad as that sounds like like you could tell that she was gonna die at some time in this movie yeah but, but not the way but, she did yeah but not the way she did yeah yeah because he suffered like when that happened i was like yeah this dude's insane yeah while he may not have problems with her mm -hmm. like like i like what yeah <laughs> what the yeah I, I looked at i looked at it i was just like dude why like like, like i get it and i know that she made him this way in some yeah sense, but like I, and again, that's one thing mm -hmm. where you sympathize with him. It's like, yeah. she did this to you. But yeah. at the same time, geez, like, yeah. why? Yeah, whenever she spoke so highly about Thomas Wayne, um, I just thought she just really liked him. Like, but then like, it got so much deeper in that subplot, like yeah. with like how they had a relationship, but like it really wasn't a relationship. And like, she called it like uh, Arthur Thomas Wayne's son and like, going on to this whole thing. She was, she had this belief that Thomas Wayne would help them like with their like current, like financial problems, financial problems and how they were living. If he became mayor of Gotham, it, it wasn't really the case of what was going on because um, when Arthur went and confronted Thomas Wayne saying, oh, it's me, dad, ha ha. And then um, punched him in the face saying you're adopted. That, that, that was kind of harsh, like that was like, really bad yeah but i mean that's like yeah like that was the stereotypical like rich guy yeah yeah but i feel like they had to make it that way just because it's like a movie about a poor person yeah yeah whenever he went to arkham asylum to get proof to see if like if his mom was actually crazy um he found adoption papers for him and he was never told that he was adopted but like he was um he was abused as a kid, found out he was abused as a kid, and the reason why he has his like uncontrollable laughter is because of head trauma. He was like chained to like some radiator or something like that. Right. Like that was like the whole thing, like I was really hoping that he was like Batman's brother or something like that. Yeah, that would have been a weird That, that would have been like really good because like if they did like another movie with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and then maybe like Robert Pattinson's Batman or someone else's Batman. They're setting something up. They're setting yeah, they have to be setting something up because uh, because Phoenix is actually open to do doing more with the character. Well, yeah, that's the thing though. Yeah. Like this movie takes place back in the '80s, and then it looks like it's in the DCU mm -hmm. with yeah. the scene with killing the parents. Because mm -hmm. I remember, and I don't remember which movie it was, but I remember seeing like the opening credits of like a it was a movie that Batman was in DCU. Like, was it Batman versus Superman? Might have been. I'm not. I don't know. It, pro it yeah, it probably was because yeah, that's, that's like, like the only movie he's really a yeah. star in other than Justice League. Yeah. But that's like past. Yeah. But the 
necklace being flipped off like the mother after yeah, she got shot flying everywhere pearls flying that was an opening scene i remember yeah. that as soon as i saw that i was like this is connected somehow yeah which means jared leto's joker could be a poser that would be crazy that's a good theory though like i that's what i thought of right away and i told yeah. you about that yeah. like in the theater but yeah. that's what i thought of because yeah. i don't like i don't know why they made the joker set back then but it was a perfect setting like if they made yeah. it like today it'd be like it, obviously it'd still be good but like back then mm -hmm. run down not as much technology like yeah. everything's still like gotham gotham mines yeah. i guess that was the best way to do it for joker so the, i do think it's connected in some way but i i don't know how yeah i really i was kind of like really hoping that he would like kill bruce wayne yeah. i don't know why i was just hoping like that would be like the perfect like origin for yeah. batman yeah because that would have been crazy. Like, if you see, like, um, the new Batman and then, like, him, like, confronting him, like, you killed my dad or something like that. It's like, or and then, like, yeah. or, like, he could have, like, just made that joke. Yeah, one way we could, like, figure out if it's the same. Well, obviously, this would figure it out, but if it's the same um, kid as Bruce yeah. Wayne. Yeah. But at the same time, that kid would have gotten older, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, because Batman vs. Superman came out, like, in 2016, right? Yeah. So, yeah, he'd be like three years, four years mm -hmm. older. But then again, if you look at Thomas Wayne and uh, what's the mother's name? Martha. I think. Martha, because yeah. that was yeah. the whole plot of that. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's one way you can figure it out. But I mean, at the same time, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, my camera's about to die. I mean, that was a pretty good conversation anyway. So. Yeah, it was. But I also like really want to talk about like when he killed Murray, though. No, go ahead and do that because yeah. we're fast. So like whenever. Uh, Whenever Joker killed Murray, that was like probably like my favorite scene in the movie, even though it like it was like really brutal. It was just so suspenseful, and I heard that it was like a whole like the script was like of that scene was like nine pages long. It makes sense though. Yeah, do a lot of describing. Yeah, yeah, and um, like you get what you deserve, and he boom got him. I was just all like, oh my gosh. That was like the whole underlining of yeah. the movie. You get what you deserve. Yeah. With Thomas Wayne, with yeah. Batman's parents. With Murray. With Murray. Yeah. With uh, Murray Franklin. Yeah, I think we're gonna end it off here. Um, probably like one of the best movies I've seen this year. It's in my top three. Like it's, it's uh, it's mixed in my top two with Far From Home and this movie. What about Endgame? Endgame is like first, like I don't think anything can beat that for me. Oh, you said tied yeah. for a second. Okay. Yeah, it's tied for a second for yeah. me. This is like in my, at least, my, I don't know my top five, but it's in my top five at least. I know that. Yeah. Sure. What's your final, what's your final like rating? Um, even though we're going to go see it again tomorrow, off of first view, nine out of ten. Yeah. Off of first view, yeah. Honestly, I'd give it a ten. Like there, there are some movie, like there are some problems I've had with it, but overall it's a ten for me. I just, I just really love this movie. I'm definitely be getting it on Blu-ray, and I'm just gonna add it to like a movie collection or something like that, of some sort. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this movie review. Hope you guys liked it. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for new. Turn on post notifications so you guys know whenever I upload. Turn on all notifications so you get every single upload. And uh, should we do more movie reviews? Just let us know below. But yeah, anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace. All right. Send in the clown.